What's up, everybody? My name is Shannon, and I am still waiting for my Seder. And today, we are talking about The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. So this book was recommended to me by one of you lovely viewers out there. And I gotta say, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting it to be. The Girl Who Drank the Moon is obviously about a girl who drinks the moon, but it is so much more than that. It takes place in a time of witches and magic, and it is a very Grimm's fairy tale esque type of telling where the story is really focused on the witch in this town, and there's so much sorrow surrounding this town because for so many generations, they have been sacrificing their youngest child whenever you know the time comes to the witch who lives in the woods but there's a lot more going on here this witch is very confused as to why this town is leaving babies in the woods so she will take them and take it upon herself to find them loving homes and whenever she's with these children she always lets them drink a little bit of starlight until with one child she makes a mistake and accidentally feeds her moonlight and this girl becomes in magic and the story is really about her upbringing and kind of the weight of growing up being in magic and the witch makes a decision to erase those memories from this child and that's where the true themes of the story start to come in and there's a lot about sorrow and hopefulness and memories and bringing up the past and it's a very cool book and I think it's better when it's being talked about. As a read, it was a little bit on the boring side, a little bit on the slow side. I kept waiting for something to happen. I kept waiting for the book to like get started and it just never did. It, it kept feeling like a prologue. I never felt super invested in any of the characters. They felt very much like, you know, if you were reading a grim story, like you never get super attached to those classic fairy tale characters. You get attached to the themes and the things that they symbolize and you love seeing them appear in other media, but the actual, you know, like prince and princess and witch and like all of this kind of stuff, they're never really like fully realized as characters. And that's how I felt about this book. There were a lot of things that were talked about and hinted about that was just like explaining an exposition. It didn't ever feel like it was tangible and that it was actually happening. And I really wanted to get more into it. I wanted to get more into somebody's point of view. I wanted to see these things as they were happening instead of being told. So that was just a little bit frustrating. It just got a little bit on my nerves. Like I said, the story is still really beautiful and it is very moving, but I feel like it would have meant more to me if I had gotten attached to these characters. Now, that being said, this is a middle grade novel. I feel like it is really meant for younger readers. Like if my mom had read this to me when I was little, I probably would have loved it. And it's one where you can return to it again and again and again, and you're probably going to get something different out of it. So the earlier you're introduced to the girl who drank the moon, I think the more meaning you're going to get out of it. Reading it now just for myself, it gives me a lot of things to think about, but it's one that I find myself also forgetting just because the characters weren't memorable, the setting wasn't memorable, the themes that it introduced were, those are things that I think about. The way that we have this sorrow eater and everything that's going on there, the way that you might want to forget something to a race your sorrow, but it only increases it, all of that kind of stuff. It's very interesting. I just feel like it could have had more weight if I could have attached myself more to these characters. That is a personal thing. That is just how I read. That is how I attach to things. So other people reading this might have a completely different take from it, but that is just what I got out of it. So I am actually giving this book 8B+. I do recommend checking it out, but like I said, just keep in mind that it is a very, like Hans Christian Andersen, Grimm's fairy tale type of reading. If you've ever sat down and tried to read the original Grimm's fairy tale, that is what it feels like to read this book. That's kind of gonna get it in there for you. So themes and everything are amazing. I just feel like we could have gone a little bit deeper. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe so you can talk books with me every week. That is everything I got for you today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!